G'day guys, welcome back to the Pittsburgh Steelers Syndicate. I'm your host, Mark, and today we are talking about the situation with Steph on to it. I don't know about you, uh, what you guys think, and hopefully you can you can put those thoughts in the comments as we go through this video. But what is happening with the situation with the Steph on Steph on to it? Now, to me, it's quite mind-boggling, and it's so interesting because as a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers, we are not told that much about what is happening. So we know that Stefan Tuitt signed a big deal, a five-year deal in 2017 uh, for, for $60 million, defensive end. He is like, he's a partner in crime to Cameron Haywood, uh, up-and-coming guy, like was, I reckon could have been, you know, face the franchise kind of material on that defensive line. And then all of a sudden with the injury and the, the, the unfortunate death to his brother, uh, we don't, we get nothing out of him. We, we go, we, the, as, as Steeler fans, we don't understand or know what is happening exactly at that position. Now, the, the first point that raises to, to that I need, that I like, like to question, is that even our, are we, are we entitled to, as fans, are we entitled to that, that view or, uh, you know, welcome to the locker room and, and, and know what is happening about every single player? Probably not. You're probably not meant to be entitled to all the way into their life. But at the same time, as a Steeler fan, and hopefully, guys, uh, next week on the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers Syndicate podcast with myself, Mark, and Owen, we will address and we will talk about this one of, of uh, on our main theme on our podcast coming up this Monday. Uh, we will be tackling this question. So this, this issue, it hasn't gone away. It hasn't gone away uh, in about a year or so. We had no idea. Steeler fans were asking every single week about when his knee his knee went down in 2021 when he started to get better. What well, we thought he was starting to get better, he was still grieving with the process to do with with his with his brother, and that is so unfortunate. It's so it's terrible. It's awful, right? At the same time, um, Steeler fans were like, "Well, is this guy going to play? Is he, is he coming back to wear the black and gold and improve this defense?" Or do, does the organization go out and get someone else like Akeem Hicks or, or, or another free agent could help improve improve the defense? Or do they run with some other, um, the rookies who they signed this year, DeMarvin Leal? Or I'll talk about another bloke too, uh, Isaiah Loudermilk. So these questions are quite interesting, I think, as a Steeler fan, because I don't think we've, I don't think we've seen this much mums the word on one player for maybe a very long time. Uh, of course, in, in the history of all stuff, you know, we, we had we had the, the issues with Antonio Brown going, see you later. He wants to retire now and whatever's happening, right? We had stuff to do with, you know, Martavius Bryant being one of the best receivers, but then he got caught up in all the other stuff to get banned and, and things of that nature. It is, to me, it is it is curious as, as a player and every time when they get interviewed, uh, like throughout the, the past, you know, in the off season, ever since probably since Super Bowl, the coaches like Mike Tomlin, Kevin Colbert, and Art Rooney, uh, as they get interviewed, that question comes up and there is still silence. There's radio silence on, on the issue or the front of Stefan to it. This came up, uh, this was about a month ago, I think it was, Brooke Pryor when they had like a, an off-season interview. And I find, I, find this, uh, I find this quite funny and quite cheeky. So Brooke Pryor tweeted, uh, this is about, what, last month, about one month ago. And she says, Mark Tomlin grins when he's asked about Stefan to it, you know, Mark Tomlin does that, 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 <laughs> that Mark Tomlin smile, uh, as he, as if to know only he knows what's going on and he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to tell you. So she says here, Mark Tomlin, uh, when asked about Stefan to it, grins, a question he's come to expect every time we talk to him and, and, and says there's no update, but to it is doing well. And then I start to come back is, is doing well enough for the Pittsburgh Steel fans? Is that enough for you guys to say, well, going into the season, if I want to cheer and support my team on, is doing well enough? Is that enough for, to, to, for you to hang on? Or do we need to know? And I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm struggling with the fact is, in my mind, I, I think the defensive line will be Haywood. Alu-Alu, is, I think he'll be healthy for, he's on the one-year one year contract, and then he'll go into be a free agent, but he's getting quite older. The whole the whole defensive line is getting older, right? If if it's those three fellas, they're all getting older, and the only one that's really talked about the most is Cameron Hayward, because we know that he's that he's he's going to be he's, he's a legend and he's he's starting there. But I do think I do think Alulu plays. 
However, at the same time, we've been given no confirmation for that to be a fact. So that is quite interesting. Now, also, guys, I wanted to go into this video just a little bit and try and think, well, what would be the what would be the what would be the I guess the emergency backup plan to say if there was no tour and he never comes to camp? But there were reports also, I think it was uh, 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 last month saying he was in the facility. Now that could be for any reason. It could be him, him going in there to sort some paperwork out, to uh, get back in the gym. Could be just to catch up with, with mates. I don't know. Right, He's gone through a very harrowing experience. I've never lost. Well, I still have all my brothers. So I'm very lucky, right? Uh, I never lost someone so close to me like that. So I can't even, I can't even comprehend the situation to what he's going through. It's just interesting to, to see that we are told absolutely nothing. And then the speculation arises because Tuart is, is on uh, his last year going into 2022 on the big deal. And maybe this is the year where, where he, he plays, hopefully football, and then might sign another few, another contract. I don't know. But it is, it is interesting because we did sign DeMarvin Leal, uh, defensive end, Texas A&M round three, pick 84. Could he be the replacement? No, I'm not sure, right? That's a, that's a possibility. On the roster is also, right, on the roster, uh, you have going down like the depth chart. You have Isaiah Lidemir, who we'll talk about in a minute. We have uh, Carlos Davis, who's been around for, for a few. Uh, Wormley on the other side, he can play tackle and defensive end too. Um, but he's just a guy. And same with the other blokes down, down, the, down the list. Archie Bong and then Montrevious Adams and Henry more or less play nose tackle. So is... is is DeMarvin Leal his replacement? Is that, is that the possibility? Or is it the other fella? Uh, Isaiah Lautermilk, defensive defensive tackle, defensive end. He played last year. Rookie, now he's in, going into his second year. He had played 15 games, uh, 23 total tackles, one sack, and I think he had three pass deflections. And then you go look at uh, DeMarvin Leal's stats as a, as a college guy, right? Just pretty normal average stats for, for a round three guy. He got, he got better with his sacks over the three years as he played with Tex A&M, right? So he got better each and every year. So is there a contention where these two players, uh, Lauda Milk second year and Leal, DeMarvin Leal first year, are taking that role from Stefan to it? Or, is, or do we have absolutely no idea? Like I would like to find the fan out there that actually knows. If there's a fan out there that they think that, that to it is a wrap. Is, is two at a wrap, a defensive end there? Because this is going to really, uh, to me, going into mini camp, we're getting so close to mini camp and training camp that you'd have to figure it out. Because last year we didn't, we couldn't figure it out. And when I say we, I mean the Steelers. We couldn't figure it out. The Steelers couldn't figure out the run game. They couldn't stop the the, the passing game situ situations. On that defensive line, all they really had was Cameron Hayward, and he is a beast and he's a genius. But I think at some certain level, if you're going to bring back to it, I think getting the fans excited, getting you excited, getting me excited, to be like, oh yeah, he's playing again, to it's back. To it's back with his brothers. And we just haven't heard that uh, throughout the off season. As Brooke Pryor said in the, the last week's tweet, he's doing well and Mike Tomlin smiles. So he's doing well and a Mike Tomlin grin good enough. I don't know. I, <laughs> I think the whole situation is quite, uh, you know, amusing or interesting, but it is, it is also quite sad too because of what Tuart had to go through, going through the injury. Uh, didn't play a lick of football last year. The guy hasn't played football for two years. Is Tuart even ready to, to come back and play football? That's another question. So all these questions, guys, we will be answering as well on the podcast next week. We have a podcast called... Pittsburgh, sorry, a podcast called Steel Syndicate uh, Podcast. Uh, myself and Owen, we do that every single Your American, Your American Monday. Your American Monday, I think it is. I got to flip around my Australian brain. So Your American Monday, that podcast comes up, and I think this week we'll we will jump into that notion. We'll talk about the Stefan Tuit um, situation with the Steelers. Will he play? Won't he play? Uh, what it means for him if he does, what it means for him if he doesn't. Because right now, I don't know what it means for him if he doesn't. Uh, I think if he, if he doesn't play at all and just retires, I don't, I don't know. Then possibly maybe maybe it is DeMarvin Leal or Isaiah Loudermilk, second-year, first-year guys, 
can they hold up ship? They're a young, they're a, they're a younger version. They're a lot younger than Tua. Tua's going into his, I think he's 29 this year, and those fellas are 22, 23. So we will tackle that question on the podcast uh, coming up this Monday. But thanks, guys, for checking out the Pittsburgh Steelers Syndicate. We do appreciate all the comments, the likes, the shares, and the subs. You guys are doing awesome. So we thank you. We thank you so much. All right, guys. As always, here we go, Steelers. Here we go.